whoop de doo What does it all mean, Basil? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed to the world of Last Epoch once again in my boot camp how to series. And what are we talking about today? We are talking about end game progression, really end game systems. What is there to do in Last Epoch and some tips and tricks for you. And honestly, at time of recording, I have no idea if this is going to be a short video or a long video. We're just going to take it step by step. Now, right now, I am in the end of time. And you normally reach the end of time between level 20 and 30, normally right around level 25. And once you reach the end of time, you are basically given two options, okay? Option number one is once you reach the end of time, you have beaten the Temple of Atera, you get to pick your mastery. So for an Acolyte, which I am right now, I would get to pick, do I want to be a Necromancer or do I want to be a Lich? And in the future, I would get to pick if I want to be a warlock. And if you follow this channel, you know exactly what I'm going to pick, which is, of course, Necromancer. I got nothing against Lich. Lich is great. Lich is even stronger. But I don't think it's as fun. Now, once you make that selection, you also are given a second choice. But this choice is not right in your face. OK, the second choice is. Do you want to continue with the campaign? OK, and we're going to talk more about that. Or do you want to start the end game system? Because as soon as you reach the end of time, you can just run over here and run down this corridor, which is the monolith of fate. And this is the end game mapping inside of Last Epoch. Now, if you really are only level 20, 25, your character will have to be strong enough to take on a level 58 zone. I believe it's level 58 zone. Yes, that is normal. And for me, starting fresh with no leveling gear, I was able to go into the Monolith of Fate at level 31 and I never left it. OK, so that's just more how strong you think you are and testing yourself. Some people go into the Monolith of Fate, realize they're not they're not strong enough. Then they go back into the campaign, get five or six more levels, then jump back. It's totally what you want to do. Now, once once you are inside the monolith of fate, we're just going to say that you are strong enough to do it. We're going to start right here. OK, there is a path that makes the most sense. OK, there are options here. All right. And I want you to follow me for just a second. The first run you are going to do is fall of the outcasts. Once you kill Abomination, you're going to be given a choice. Do you want to go left to a level 62 zone or do you want to go right to a level 66? Always go right. OK, I'm going to say that again. Always go right. You don't want to go left. All right. It takes longer and the rewards aren't as good. And you'll normally get more experience because you are going into a higher zone. OK. So you want to beat the black sun. You want to beat ending the storm. You want to beat the reign of dragons. And then the three newest monolith islands is the spirits of fire, the last ruin and the age of winter. OK, once you complete all three of these one, two and three, you run over here and click on this little box here. I'll do that right now. We'll go. We'll go look at the box. Mm -mm -mm. I probably should should have been just there already. A lot of people are like, why can't I unlock empowered? I don't know what to do. You got to run over here and click on this box right here. And that's where I am standing on the map. OK, you get to choose when you enter the monolith of fate. Take the right side. And once you unlock these three, you will unlock level 100, which is what empowered is on every single island. All right. Until you beat the last three and click on this box, you will not get empowered runs. Now, tips and tricks for the monolith tips and tricks for the monolith. There's a couple islands that are really important. OK, two of them that you really want to focus on. One being the Reign of Dragons, OK, because when you beat the Reign of Dragons, you have a chance of getting a blessing that gives you critical strike avoidance. 
and this can roll in empowered up to 70%. This is one of the quintessential survivability mechanics, okay? The other one you want to look at is right here, Spirits of Fire, in which I, I've been maxed in Endurance, so I haven't re-rolled it. But here you can get Endurance Percent, which is another quintessential survivability mechanic, okay? I would literally play those two until you have the proper Crit Strike Avoidance and the Endurance Percent. Now, where there are three other islands that are going to give you survivability. The Black Sun can give you Void Resistance. Ending the Storm can give you Lightning Resistance. And right up here, the Age of Winter can give you Physical Resistance. So you are talking three different resistances with Crit Avoidance, with Endurance. Now, these Blessings are not going to max out those stats, okay? Okay. Unless you get a perfect roll, you're going to get pretty darn close at 75. But that is going to give you a ton of what I like to call free survivability mechanics, okay? So making sure you play the right islands over and over again to get the right blessings can make you very tanky. And obviously, depending on your build, depending on your class, depending on your mastery, there are other very strong blessings. For this video, I am only focusing on survivability. Okay, those are my tips and tricks for the Monolith of Fate. Now that you have a basic understanding of the endless web system that is the Monolith, now we're going to talk about other things you can do in Last Epoch because we are only halfway there. Inside of this game, there are three different dungeons currently, and there is going to be a lot more added in the future. Now, what's really cool about these dungeons and all of them are played very differently offer different rewards, and each of them have a different boss. And I mean, they are very, very different. And you will notice as you are playing that you find lots of different keys. And these keys are what open the said dungeons. You have the Temporal Sanctum, which I'm in front of right now. And this is the dungeon where the reward is you get to create a legendary item like my new unique Aaron's Will. You then have the Lightless Arbor. This is the Gold Sink Dungeon, where you get to use your gold to pick various rewards and then open up multiple chests and get all kinds of goodies. And then the last dungeon is the Soul Fire Bastion, where you get access to the Soul Gambler. And the enemies you kill, you get to spend their souls towards loot that can only be found there. Okay, now quick little tip or trick for the keys is if you right click on your mouse, the map will immediately pop up where the dungeon is. And this little red door is an indication that there is a dungeon there. So if you click on any of them, you will see that they are right there. And I haven't done the Lightless Arbor yet with this class. Okay. Now, there are four tiers per dungeon. So technically you can do 12 different dungeons and then you can just keep running it over and over again. When you click on the door, okay, you got to take your key, you got to put it in, then you got to hit enter the sanctum. And when you do that, you are given four options, level 55, level 80, level 95, and level 100. This fight right here, tier four Julra, is considered kind of the pinnacle. I don't want to say shaper level, but it is one of the hardest fights, especially with high corruption. Okay, so each dungeon, three dungeons have four different levels of difficulty, and each of them give you better rewards based upon which tier you can do. All right, so that is the dungeons. You now kind of have a general understanding of dungeons and the monolith of fate but we are still not done. I feel like there is a hidden end game that believe it or not, a lot of people don't even know exists. And it was the first end game really introduced into this game. And that is your arena keys. Just like the dungeons, if you right click on arena, it'll pop you up right here and you will go over to Hyboria at the champion's gate. So we are headed over to the arena. And here it is right here. When you click on the arena, you will take your arena key. You will put it in and you will enter the arena. Now with this character, I have not done the arena yet. We've been grinding out the monolith. It's only been three days. 
But just like the dungeons, there is Arena 1, Arena 2, Arena 3, and Arena 4. And each arena also has a boss associated with it that also has boss drops. And what the arena is, is more of kind of a, I don't want to say endless run, but in this case, you will like, you'll fight five waves of enemies, then five waves of enemies, and you will keep going through five waves of enemies that continuously get harder until you pull the arena champion, okay? You'll fight the arena champion, and then you're done, and you can move on to different tiers. But the old school way is this right here. This mode is the endless arena. So this is what we're going to see a lot for the ladder. Like this should be the main, one of the main ladder functions that you will see that is coming soon. How far can you go? Can you make it to level 100 on the endless wave? Can you make it to 200, 500, 1000? That will be up to you. Now there is one last key I have to show you, which is fairly new. And that is right here. This is the key of memory. If you like going into the arena and doing the endless waves, what this key is going to do is cut that number in half if you go in again. Okay. What that means is let's say you make it to wave 1000. Okay, let's say you make it to wave 1000. You sat in front of your chair for 23 hours. If you put in the key of memory, you will start at wave 500. Okay. It cuts your old number in half. So you don't have to re-roll the entire dungeon back at zero. And if you've never beaten uh, wave 100, the key will start you at wave 100. Okay. So a quick little breakdown of all the systems. You have the arena right here at in Hyboria. All right. The champion's gate. You have your three dungeons, the Lightless Arbor, the Soulfire Bastion, and the Temporal Sanctum, and then the main end game, which is the Monolith of Fate. Okay. And of course, this is an overview video. Um, personally, for me, you're going to get the best rewards and have the most fun. And if you're used to any form of mapping, this is going to feel very familiar to you. But there is more to do than just that that's the end game system i can't think of anything else that you need to do hopefully you were entertained or at least learn something erin out <laughs>